Everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting from the cockpit of a brand new Mooney Acclaim Ultra. This version of the Acclaim is the latest version, turbocharged, high performance airplane. Differs from the long body ovation in that it does have a turbocharger. It's also got the two doors. We'll talk about that. I'm with uh, Lee Drumheller of Premier Aircraft Sales, who covers Mooney for the southeast area of the United States. We're going to talk about the performance of the airplane. We'll take it up to altitude. We actually are at altitude now. We'll look at the climb and the performance and the fuel burn. But first, Lee's going to give us a general walk around of the airplane and talk about some of the features. All right, so what makes an Acclaim an Acclaim? Well, the number one thing that differentiates the Acclaim from the Ovation is the engine. Um, this is the Continental TSIO 550G. 280 horsepower, 2500 RPM max. So it's going to create that that power, that's that 75 percent power all the way through the service ceiling at 25,000 feet. That's done through turbochargers, and then you've also got dual twin intercoolers on the engine as well. So twin turbo, twin intercooled, um, creates all of the power we need to be the fastest piston on the market. Um, one of the things that really differentiates the Mooney, I think, from all of my competitors, our competitors. Um, would be, you know, I always get asked, what's the one thing that nobody knows that's special? And, you know, when I first got introduced to Mooney, I was told this by one of my colleagues, and it, it is the motor mounts. Um, something that nobody thinks about. You know, you're used to riding in your 172, 182, Aero, Bonanza, and it's, you know, after about a three hour flight, you're kind of fatigued and, and kind of tired and ready to get out of the airplane. Well, I can tell you with certainty after a five hour flight in your ovation cross country or your acclaim cross country, it's not gonna feel that way. And I'm gonna show you why. And that's these really soft motor mounts here that really alleviate all of the engine vibration and take a piston aircraft and really make it feel more turbine-like than, than piston. And the acclaim is as close as you can get to turbine speeds, but guess what? You're on a piston budget. Um, we're gonna walk around. This is the Ultra. Obviously, you know, if you haven't heard of the Ultra, this is the newest and latest, greatest thing out of Kerrville. Um, two doors, updated avionics, the G1000 NXI, Flightstream 510. All of the standard, all of that is standard. Um, you get all of the goodies, gizmos, and gadgets that you want in the airplane and uh, really give you um, an excellent experience. Um, I want to show you something down here that is, is something that makes Mooney unique. This is just a small piece. And if you look here, this is your fuel vent. There's an identical one on the other side of the wing, but this is nine flush mounted rivets. And this is the detail and, and precision craftsmanship that we do in Kerrville, that you take a small piece like that and put it over the whole airplane. And again, we're the fastest uh, single engine piston. This is uh, one thing that's, uh, that's on the Acclaim that is not on the Ovation, and it is a speed fairing under the flap here. So um, if you take a look under the flap, um, there is a fairing that, uh, that covers that gap. Um, on the Ovation, you would actually have a gap there. On the Acclaim, under here, you will see the fairing. So that's the basic view of the Acclaim Ultra. Now let's look at some of the specifics. Might as well start with price, since everyone asks, and I want to give you time to catch your breath for the rest of the video. The base price of the Acclaim Ultra is $789,000, and that includes a new program Mooney is offering called Fill and Fly. It's basically a three-year, 300-hour warranty that covers everything but gas, including all the maintenance and all the annuals. These days, new airplanes typically don't have a lot of options, and neither does the Acclaim. Air conditioning is one, and TKS flight into known icing approval is another but you can't have both of those in the same airplane, and I'll get to why in a minute. Just about every new airplane has ADS-B in and out, and so does the Acclaim. That's done through Garmin's GTX 335R transponder, and that gives you TIS-B, that's Traffic Information System Broadcast for Anti-Collision Awareness, and it also has FIS-B for Weather, that's Flight Information System Broadcast. As you probably know, FISB includes Tex weather and NEXRAD weather radar capabilities, so you really wouldn't need to add those to the airplane. 
All of this displays on the Garmin G1000 NXi, which again is just about standard for every new airplane in this class. Also standard is the Flightstream 510, which is an onboard local area network that lets you update databases and allows your tablet apps to talk to the in-panel avionics. Now, what will this thing carry? Not as much as a Ford 150, that's for sure, and not as much as a Cirrus either. Figure on a real-world useful load of about 931 to 940 pounds or so. That's in an airplane with standard oxygen system, but no de-icing and no AC. The Acclaim carries 89 gallons of gas, so with full tanks, there's cabin payload enough for about 400 pounds. That's two people and heavyish bags if the people themselves aren't too heavyish. By the way, that fill-up will cost you about 450 bucks at current fuel prices. If you're not too greedy with the throttle, 89 gallons of gas is good for about 900 miles of stellar air range with a 45-minute reserve. That's Los Angeles to Seattle in a little over four hours. Not bad. On the other hand, if you can afford an $800,000 airplane, do you really care about saving five gallons an hour on gas? I'm as cheap a screw as you're ever likely to find, but I wouldn't. In that case, haul the Acclaim up to 25,000 feet, and it'll do 242 knots on 21 gallons. That's almost 280 miles per hour, and it is hauling ass. The fuel will be into the reserve in a little over three hours, but you'll be 800 miles downrange. So you could fly from Miami to Charlotte in two and a half hours door to door. That probably beats an airline ticket. A more realistic way to fly the airplane is to dial the power back to a fuel burn of about 16 gallons an hour in the mid-teens, say 16,000 feet. That's going to give you right at 200 knots. You'll need oxygen, but it's a lot less risky to fly on O2 at that altitude than in the mid-20s. Of course, at those altitudes, icing is always a possibility, even in summer. So that's why Mooney offers TKS anti-icing systems as an option. In case you're not familiar, TKS works by weeping de-icing fluid through membranes on the wing and tail surfaces, and these are laser drilled with micro holes. It's gonna cost you though. TKS is a $65,000 option, and it weighs 95 pounds fully charged. That's a big weight hit. And that gets us back to the choice between air conditioning and TKS. It's not practical to have both because the AC adds another 66 pounds. So with both, you're really chewing into the useful load. The AC system also requires a belly scoop after the cabin, and that dings the speed a couple of knots. Plus, the AC compressor and all the plumbing goes into the space where Mooney normally have what's called a hat shelf. It's an extension of the baggage area. I don't know about you, but I occasionally like to carry a hat, and in a near million dollar airplane, I'd kind of like to have a place to put it. So personally, I think I'd skip the AC. One last thing. What you're looking at here is the spark carry-through in a Mooney. That's the main structural element that carries the load of the Mooney's big single-piece wing. It's just hell for strong, and it's one reason you'll pull enough G's to smash your eyeballs flat as manhole covers before you ever break the wings off a of Mooney. Another reason Moonies don't break up is this. It's the welded steel cage that surrounds the main cabin that Mooney had to re-engineer to accommodate the pilot side door. And if anything, the cage is stronger than ever. In the new airplanes, the cabin is covered in this composite shell rather than aluminum. The doors are now carbon fiber, so they're lighter and they fit better, and that makes for a quieter ride in the cabin. Okay, so we're taking off from Kerrville. The density altitude is 4,300 feet, according to the AWOS. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, sample climb performance. We've already talked a little bit about the all performance of the airplane. So, Lee, if this is a typical summertime trip, how do we plan this climb? Uh, let's say we're going to 13.5. How would you typically do it? And well, the great thing about the Acclaim is with the turbochargers and the density controllers on the wastegates, everything full forward till you get to whatever altitude you want. 
Okay, so there's really nothing to worry about. We'll look at the temperatures, but uh, this airplane runs fairly cool from what I can tell so far. Very cool running airplane. There's no cow flaps to deal with. There's no manda mandatory power reduction. So, you know, 120 knot is the cruise climb, and you should get around 12, 1300 feet per minute. All right, we'll give it a go. Here we go. That's a good place to talk about the autopilot. Uh, this is the uh, Garmin uh, GFC 700. That's correct. That plays with the NXI. That's uh, correct. So typically, I suspect most owners are going to fly this airplane as an autopilot airplane. It's a very capable autopilot. It's got vertical speed, full coupling. Yes. Really, really, a ca really capable autopilot that, you know, especially if you're an IMC, alleviates some of your workload and lets you do the important parts, which are setting up the navigation and, and your or your approach, or your departure, arrival, whichever phase of flight you're in. The uh, NXI is an upgrade from the previous G1000. I commented on our earlier flight that um, I like it. The displays are much more vivid, and I can't say this for sure without comparing them side by side, but Garmin's done some cleanup and bring kind the graphics, because I find it, I don't fly the G1000 regularly, I find it much easier to find stuff. Uh, you know, things like uh, uh, along the bottom here, OAT and uh, ground wind vectors and that sort of thing seem just a lot easier to find. What other changes in the NXI have you found that you like? Uh, obviously, I, I really like the moving map page or MFD. You can get the IFR VFR chart overlay. Um, so if you're a guy that likes to pull up your iPad and and look at the VFR chart. Now that option's right on your MFD. Uh, same with your IFR low and route chart. Look at your airways like you're looking at it on a chart. Probably my favorite feature. The other is visual approaches. Um, but if I have to say, the one thing that's the greatest about the G1000 and excise the overall speed of the processing. Um, the, uh, the legacy G1000s, you would range in or range out, and you'd have a, sometimes five to ten second lag waiting for the system to catch up. The basic NXI is a pretty complete system. There are only a couple of avionics options on this. What are the typical options? Well, Jet Unlock is an option on, on some of our other competitors. It is standard equipment with our airplane. Um, I think uh, some of the other competitors also make Surface Watch is an option. Um, that will be released in phase two of the Mooney software, but it will not cost anybody who buys one. It's not an optional cost. It's standard equipment. If you buy one now, it might not be in the software right now, but once phase two, phase two is released, that's field upgradable. One other thing about the NXI is uh, it has the keyboard. So unlike the Garmin G1000, you can key in data rather than scrolling it in with the Centric knobs. Do you do that a lot on this? I use the keypad all the time. Okay. Uh, it's one of those things I was unsure of whether my muscle memory was start to use it. Um, after I've had, after about eight hours, I was using this all the time for typing in waypoints, uh, scrolling through my pages to check auxiliary with I'm changing the music, looking at the map, looking at the weather. It's a lot. It's it's very easily accessible just because it's right there at your hand. Yeah, the, for, I'll show this also, it's a B-roll. It's right down between the pilot's knees, so once you get the feel where the keys are, it's almost like touch typing. Uh, so you've got a alphanumeric keyboard. And there are there's also a joystick down there for control on the, on the screen. Yep. Okay, leveling off. And that took about... Ten and a half minutes uh, from break release to 13,500. Pretty good performance. Okay, so now we're watching the airplane accelerate. Okay, so level at 13.5, uh, probably still accelerating a little bit. Uh, 206 knots, 164 knots indicated. 200 is true at uh, 21.9 gallons per hour. Typical performance for this airplane? This, this is typical. Uh, if we had the, uh, an ovation on our wing, we had left the ovation around eight or 9,000 feet. Definitely. The, the, the climb rate would start to show then. Oh, 100%, yes, sir. 
Oh, with the show with the speed. Yeah. Oh, the, the elevation could certainly go to this speed, uh, to this altitude, but it would be what, 175, 175, 180 knots. Okay, so we're basically 20 to 25 knots faster. If we wanted to range out, that's you well know, for for fun, Paul. Well, let's let's run it as as economy as we can get. Okay. Um, so for guys that say, well, your useful load is not that great. Well. You know, we don't have to do 200 knots, 75% power, 50 degrees richer peak the whole time. And that's what this setting is going to be. We're going to run it at 21 inches. Okay. okay. And 2200 RPM. So you can go ahead and pull that back to 21 inches. Okay, we're coming back to uh, 21 inches. Traffic, uh, that's 136 indicated, 172 true on 11.1 gallons per hour. That's not too shabby. Uh, full tanks. You know, let's say 11 gallons an hour at 90 gallons, about 1,400 nautical. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good range. So, if you want to run it that way, you certainly can. You certainly can. A setting. Let's say you fill the airplane up with four people and some bags. You can easily do a two-hour trip. You're just doing it 165 knots. Landing a Mooney isn't especially difficult, but landing it well is, if not a challenge, a task that requires speed discipline. Working in the pattern, it's easy to accelerate the airplane to 140 knots when you really need to hold it to 100. You have to back off on the throttle big time. Once the gear is out, the Mooney is not that different from say a Cirrus or even a Cessna 210. If the airplane is light, crossing the numbers at 80 knots or even 75 will minimize the float and shorten the rollout. Lee reminded me of a trick to use in the long body Moonies. Because they're longer, they're heavier in pitch, and raising the nose to finish the flare takes a hard pull. The trick is to run the electric pitch trim nose up during the flare. That reduces the pull effort by half or more. One bad habit Moonies have is that if they're landed flat or forced on before they're ready to quit flying, they'll bite back in the form of a wheelbarrow or a crow hop. It's because these rubber donuts in the landing gear legs don't absorb as much energy as oleo struts do. If that hop isn't arrested in the first or second cycle, the third one will likely result in a prop strike and or nose gear collapse. That's why speed over the numbers Stall. is so important, and a little less is better Stall. than a little more. You can find a detailed review of the Acclaim Ultra in the October 2018 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.